Welcome to part four of Fruit Heads Beginners Guide to Mapping series, where today we're going to focus on the lighting aspect of your maps. So how to add lighting events and create light shows for all the maps you create. So once again, we'll head, head back on over to the BSMG wiki, head on over to our mappers resources, and head on down to lighting practices. So similar, similar to standard mapping, this one we have several different guides based off of, you know, basic and intermediate. So for basic lighting, this, this guide goes over the you know, general basics of, you know, lighting events, what different events are, what different types there are, the different environments, and then how to add in those different events to, uh, to determine what your light show is going to be. We have intermediate mapping, which goes into a little bit more detail of, of more complicated effects, such as how to add strobes and ring spins and how to deal with contrast. So lighting compared to mapping does tend to be a little bit easier. There's, there's less, you know, standard practices to follow. It's just basically adding lights to uh, di different, you know, instruments or sounds and basically trying to capture some sort of feel of the sound that you want to have. So in essence, it does tend to be a little bit easier, but you do need to be a little bit more creative to get these light shows to come across. Now, you will notice down here, we do have, there are, there are various automated lighting programs that we do have, but generally they tend to not look really, really good. So the low lighter, this one, is a bit better than the standard light map, but again, it's still just auto-generated lights. I mean, they don't really look that great. Basically, basically making simple standard generic light shows uh, manually on your own will always be better than the um, basically the, the light the light shows you can create based off of these auto mappers. But if you do really want to use them, I mean, you can. But again, to, to do note, your lights are not really going to look that great if, if they are automated. So for the low lighter, this one can be found on the Discord base. You know, click on the link, head on over to Discord, and then install it that way. Light map, though, does come bundled with MMA2. So as long as you're using MMA2 as your mapper, you will already have access to it. And I will show you once we start lighting how to fly that in there. But again, I'll probably you know, remind you later, it's not going to look the greatest once you do have it made. As for, you know, the, the stuff I'll be going over, I will mainly be focused on just, you know, standard basic lighting at, uh, for most of this video. A little bit, like, you know, probably just sometimes throughout, and most likely towards the end, I will dip into intermediate lighting a little bit. But again, if you, feel, if you guys don't want to, you know, really go to those really intense effects right off the bat, basic lighting will be, you know, just fine for the start. So we head on over to our basic lighting wiki. So like I mentioned, this one explains all the different lighting types that you can have and the different event types you can have as well as all the different environments that you do have set on to the map to use. So depending on which environment you chose, will determine what events will be present in there. So, so for now, we'll head back over to our media government mapper. We'll open up the level we were working on before. So for this one, off camera, I did go back in and then add a, a, a bit more of the uh, our lovely timing notes. Basically kind of give us a guide of, you know, the, the, the notes we're gonna have. And give us a way to basically kind of plan out our lights that we're going to do that. Now, for me personally, I will do my lights first and then do these blocks later. But for now, for you guys, we'll have we'll have the notes uh, here set to go. So, as a reminder, how to control a um, uh, meter mapper. If you forget, we still do have our user guide on the wiki. You can basically, uh, kind of scroll through. We have a little link to find your your controls. So you hold down uh, right click on your mouse button, and then move the mouse around to look around. We have W A. S and D, as well as space, control, and then shift. And then basically kind of, kind of scroll forward and back in time. We have the scroll wheel to move forward and backwards. And then your cursor precision. So basically you either uh, enter a number or just hold down control and then scroll your scroll wheel back and forwards to change what your precision is. So now we know, now we remember how to look around and move, move around a, 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 the editor question is how do we access the lighting mode? So if you if you notice, we have this one grid where we, where we were placing our notes on before. On the right, we have a secondary grid. So if we move our camera over to the right, this is where all of our lighting events are going to go. So basically, you notice depending on we know which which uh, row you put it in, is going to determine which lighting effect will turn on. As for how to you know actually pl place these lighting blocks, if we push tab. Notice right now on the right, it's set to the note mode. So we have, you know, our different blocks, our bombs, our walls. 
if we hit tab, that'll note change into lighting mode. So we have different buttons, as well as some more stuff down on the bottom right over here. As for what these buttons are, so we have red lights, blue lights, lights are turned on, lights are set to flash, lights are set to fade, lights are set to off, and then once again, our mirror button to ch change, you know, our lighting colors, and then our delete button. As for these other ones on the, on the bottom right, we have our BPM, our laser speed, and then the stuff just basically set a strobe, basically how long do we want the strobe for? And then what precision do we want to basically be changing our block from either one, one of these types between one of these on, and then uh, uh, as well as an off block. If you look down here, you can basically see, you know, what each event is. So we have our back top lasers. These are, you know, the back and the top of the, of the lasers. We have our track ring neons, which are the lights on our rings. We have our left, uh, left and right lasers. So these are lasers on the left and the right. We have a catch off for our bottom, back and side lasers. We have a ring rotation, a small ring zoom, a left laser speed, a right laser speed, as well as a BPM change block. Hopefully, depending on the song you have chosen, you should not need to use this last one. But if you do need to change, you basically enter what BPM you want to enter. It's defaulted to this is always going to be whatever BPM you've already set your map to be. So that way, if you accidentally place a BPM block, it's not going to completely break your map. And then you'll place that block down. But again, for, for you guys, hopefully you should not need to use this. At least on your first map later on, though, once you get more experience and you do actually want to map songs with a variable BPM, this is how you would, would end up changing it. So the question is, well, what do all of these events do and what events do I have in your map? So as I was mentioning before, depending on which environment you have chosen is going to determine what event types you do have. So if you head on over to, uh, remember heading over to the basic light lighting wiki, we just go through our environments. It will show you what the environment looks like, as well as what each event is, and kind of gives you an idea of what event looks like what. So you scroll down, in this case, where we're using our big mirror environments. So this is basically what all of our lights are going to have. Notice in this case, we do not have an inner ring to deal with. If we compare it to a nice environment, this one does have that inner ring. So for me personally, I, the, one of the reasons why I like big mirror is because it doesn't have this inner ring. For my light shows, I tend to not be too creative with on how to deal with and use that inner ring. So that's why I've chosen this environment. So that way I don't have to worry about trying to use it in the first place. I have all these other laser effects to do. So we head, head on back over into our mapper. <clears throat> you can now see what each of these light events will look like. So the first one to look at is this on events. So what the on event does is it just turns this type to then be, basically be turned on. So if I just let this play through, so notice as it's going through, each light event basically you know, just turns on and then the on event just leaves that on until you decide to turn it off once again. So if we assume that basically if we, if we set it to on, it just says this event is now at 100% brightness until I'm otherwise told. So there's that top, neons, left, right, sides, great spin. So when it comes to basically setting these, you know, once you set it to on, it just says, okay, you are now on. What a flash does, it'll basically flash, you know, up to a brightness of 140%, and then quickly drop it back down to 100% for on. So, if I decide to get rid of those. And then, like I said, similar to, if you want to, you know, basically select lights, you know, basically select notes, just uh, control click once to basically start a selection and then click once more to end it. So we'll hit delete to get rid of those. So we'll take a look at a flash. And for rings, obviously a flash will do nothing because it's just, you know, spinning it, not actually adding a lights. So so notice there's that little bit of a brightness at the start of each of these, and then it goes, and then it quickly drops back down to a normal on. So flash goes up to 140, quickly brings it down to 100%, and then once again, it just stays on until you tell it to do something else. A fade is the reverse. So what a fade does. It basically starts at 100% brightness and then slowly turns to off. 
on, goes down, goes down. And then finally, we have our off block. So what that does, it just turns whatever light event you had on previously and then makes it go away. So right now, these are all set to on, and I'll tell it to go off right before the next one comes on. All right, so now the next question is, well, what about those speeds? So what laser speed does, this is more for these, these, these two side lasers. So we'll just put one on for now. So by default, it's set to be speed zero, where it's just a stationary laser, laser speed where it's just on and just stays there. You can increase this to basically however you want it to be. So Let's take a look at starting at one. Don't bring it up to two, up to four, up to eight, and then up to 16. So notice over time, it's like stationary, and then gets faster and faster and faster. Also notice every time you have a new speed, the laser position randomly changes. So notice right now, one, two, four, eight, 16, the starting position of these lasers had always changed. So this you actually can use if you want to basically make those really crazy, insane bouncing around lasers. Also notice if I decide to basically just make all of these, and yeah, we'll do five. Notice each one, even though all the speeds were the same, as soon as you hit the next one, it randomly changed where that default position was. So, if I can actually make, make these even closer, let's do every quarter. We can get nice spazzy lasers. So depending on what effect you're trying to go for, you might want those really crazy, bouncing around, nice, fun lasers. So those are what the different event types are. Now, let's go over the controls for lighting. So once again, as, we as you can kind of go through, we just kind of click on them. Or if you remember back on when we were looking at placing notes, we can use shortcuts. So one for red, two for blue. And then once you have one of those selected, W for on, A for flash, D for fade, S for off. Now, let's say you have lights already placed. How can we change them? Well, lucky us, we can edit the light blocks in place just like we were editing the note blocks in place, and the controls are gonna be very, very similar. So if we were to hold down Alt, we can left click and drag to basically move our block to wherever we wanted it to be. We can hold down Alt and then push W to turn it to an on, Alt and A to turn it to a flash, Alt and S to turn it off, and Alt and D to turn it into a fade. We can also middle click to change what the color is. Now one difference though is, in this case we have our laser speeds over here. If we were to, if we were to hold down Alt, we can scroll the wheel up and down over it, we can then increase or decrease what that laser speed was. We can also mass select, copy, paste, and mirror like we had with our blocks. So if we were to control left click, this will start our selection window, drag to whatever we wanted to select, left click once more, we now have all of these blocks selected. We can then push control C to copy them, scroll forward to where we want it to be, and then push control V, it'll paste that selection based on wherever our cursor is. Now, as a reminder, you always want to be careful when you are using copy and paste and making sure you don't have anything else selected. So control A to deselect everything you have. It is always good practice to deselect both before and after you copy and paste 
so that way you don't accidentally have extra blocks copying and pasting down where you don't want them to be. As for our mirror, if we were to have our little selection again, in this case, when we click it, it'll just change what the colors are. Namely, blue will become red and red will become blue. Notice in this case, it doesn't mirror them anywhere on this grid because again, these are not based off of where the notes are. It's based off of what lighting event type it is. So mirror only changes color, nothing else. And then, and then finally, we, we can push shift left click to go one by one of stuff we want to select or deselect moving forward. So now that we have all the main controls covered, how do we make our light show? So let's for, say, for example, we want to focus in on this little beginning of our song with these drums. So we have that cymbal hit, those quick drums, and then a dun dun. So ting. Da -da 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 -da. So how can we put this into our lights? Well, one option for a, ba a basic standard lighting is for each different light event we have, we can put that to be set to one given instrument. So for, for example, that, that for a lot of my light shows, that's kind of the thought process I like to do. What event do I want to be what instruments in order to capture something of the song? So me personally, symbols and such, I like to have as my side lasers. Now, if you listen to the sound, it basically, you get that symbol hits and that kind of fades over time. So, hey, maybe I want that to be a fade. So we'll say, okay, I want that fade to be on my backside. Backside will be my symbol hits. We have that that comes on and then it slowly fades to kind of capture the symbol hit dissipating over time. So now, okay, well now I have these drum hits. The da 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 da. So what do I want to do for these? So for drum hits or bassy hits, those I personally like to use my track ring neons. Now there is one teeny tiny problem here though. Notice these are all at one quarter hits and then into a half half hit. If I were to put these fades at these one quarters, so fade, 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 notice in this case, with how close they are, you don't have enough time for that fade to fully be realized in between each one. This is also true if, what if I just said, well, I want all of these to be ons. One common mistake ma uh, new members will do when they're making light shows is they just use nothing but on blocks. But again, remember, putting an on block down, all it does is turns this event to be on. Once it's on, you can't turn it on again. So for example, so you know you have a light switch in your room. If you flick it on, you can't try to turn it on again because it's still in that on position. So in the case, I don't want to use on because, well, it's always going to be set to be on. The other issue is these are kind of soft sounding. So instead, I do want to use that fade to capture a, you know, kind of a hit, but I want it to be, you know, be, be dimmer. So, okay, well, I'll use a fade, but we can use a little bit of a trick. Instead of doing fade, 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 what we'll do instead, fade, go down to an eighth, so we can go right before the next one, and then we'll go off. Then another fade for that one, off for between, fade again on, and then we'll go down to, okay, we're now going into these next ones. So I'll go off here. So now if I play these three play, so now you can see you do have that flashing for, for actually capturing each individual sound. But these next two, they're a little bit of a heavier hit. I don't want them to be just a fade. Maybe in this case, I'll use a flash. So now, okay, it'll flash bright. Then we'll down to an off and the other flash once again. So now we have this ending hit, but I want that to be a little bit brighter still because it has that nice deep thud at the end. 
So I can do, instead of just having a flash, so I want, I want to have that nice, you know, decent transmission or transition. Instead of how we were doing, how before we're doing fade into an off, I'll do a flash into a fade. So now, we have that nice brightness at the end, and then it quickly goes back, 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 back to fading away. But now, that's still a little bit different. Maybe instead of, since this was basically right at the end of a thing, what we could do now, since it basically, again, wasn't trying to capture that nice heavy bass hits, we could also add a ring rotation. So now we have that nice ring spin going alongside with that heavy bass hit right at that same time. Now there is one note though, however, when you guys are using these ring spin events. It dep all depends on which environment you have and where the actual, the, the, uh, these outer rings are on your map and where they start. Some environments, these rings start ahead of the player. Other environments, they start behind the player. So depending on when you want to see the spin is going to determine where you want this event to go to be placed. In this example, we're, since we're using Big Mirror, the rings actually start behind the player. Now, once this event is hit, it, it'll start spinning from behind the player. So in this case, since we're using the, the Big Mirror, whoops, instead of placing it you know, right on the beat, let's start it a little early. So now, the rings will start spinning early before the hits, but the player will see the spin at that right exact moment. Now, if you do, if you still want it, you know, if you still want it to be delayed, that's totally fine. You can basically still have on beats, so then the player will hit it, and then uh, basically, like you know, uh, half a second later, they'll see that spin going throughout the map. If that's what you want, totally fine. Have it on that beat. If you want to ha try to have the player see the spin at the same time, start a little bit early if uh, as necessary. So now let's say we, we want to start map uh, lighting up this section. So in this case, we want to focus on these, these those wubs coming off of the sides. So the so question is, okay, well, how do we want to have this lighted? So in this case, to me, this basically since the sound kind of sounds like the sound is bouncing back and forth. Maybe in this case, we can now focus on our left and right ring or left and right lasers. Now, since this part of the song is still rather slow and kind of building up, I like to use fades because it's, like, it's going to capture that sort of nice, calm, slow aspect to it. So we'll start with a right, into a left, right, into a left. But I'll... All right, so if we take a quick look. <laughs> So now, the question is, since we have this first one, there's this little kind of gap in between these two. Maybe this one I want to flash a little bit brighter. Or we do the trick on all of them where we, rather than doing fades, we do a flash into a fade. Either case, though, that looks like it's kind of So the question is, do I want them to be nice and stationary? Let's listen. So instead of notice right here, there's that little bit of a change where it kind of gets a little faster. You actually hear the song is starting to pick up speed a little bit. So maybe instead we'll have these first couple starting off as stationary. And then here, we'll actually start picking up our speeds. Since these are actually starting to be quicker, instead of going from right to left, one trick I like to do is this little bit of a bounce effect. So, so in this case, we're right now we're at the left, instead of going right into the right, what if we do the back 
then into the right. So notice what this piece is going to look like. So for this environment, this particular environment I'm using, this back la these back top lasers are right in the middle of the left and the right lasers. So what we could do is add this little nice bounce effect where we go from left, then to the middle, then into the right. And then this will give us a nice good way to then actually start changing our laser speeds. So since these were all zero, this is starting to pick up speed a little bit. Let's try a speed of three. Now notice, every single one of these webs though was also knows the same time frame part, right? So to make our lives a little bit easier for mapping, rather than actually placing down every single event, we could do a trick that we're using for mapping, copying our sections. So notice, this section is basically picking up from these. So. We'll hit control click, scroll forward, and get all of those nice and selected. So we'll hit control C to copy, control A to deselect. Get rid of U so I don't have a double, and then control V to paste. So now, Now we have this section nice and good and neatly mapped. Now you do have to be careful though as you are copying and pasting is make sure that it actually still is matching. Some sections might have a, a, a slight change somewhere in there. So after you, after you paste, let it play, give it a listen and change anything you might need to adjust. Notice in this case, this one we had before we had that, you know, dun 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 with, with those wubs. This one is now a clap instead. So since early we had used our back side lasers as our clap, hey, we'll move that over to there to now be our clap again. And in this case, let's use our little flash into a fade trick. Also, we also have, you know, there's absolutely no other lights going on in the first, at this section now. Basically everything cuts off just into that clap. So if we did have any other lights going on in this, we could add some off events to make sure everything is off. And we just have that clap coming forward. All right, so now we have this little section has now been done and lighted. But there is one note we want to take, uh, to keep, keep in the back of our minds. Right now, this mapper, is basically just a mapper. It basically was made, made, made to actually have a place in your notes in, and then basically now add, basically add in our lights on top of that. So if we are looking at these lighting effects, they are not gonna be like this in the game. The light events you see right now in this editor is a rough approximate idea that if you squint your eyes hard enough, it would kind of sort of maybe look like what it is going to look like inside of the game itself. This is especially true if you use any of those other crazy tricks about, you know, like, like I mentioned earlier, about using ring spins or about using strobes. This editor is not that great at showing you what it is exactly going to look like. But in order to know what your lights actually will look like, you don't want to use the editor. Instead, you want to actually see what it's going to look like inside of the game itself. So you will actually will want to boot into Beat Saber and actually then play your level and then see what your lights are going to look like. However, that might be, you know, kind of an issue because, you know, rather than have, you have to put on your headset and into the game and go to watch it, but maybe you only light a little bit so you have to try to escape, you have to try to get out of the map. So there are a couple of tricks you can use. One trick is what's known as using FPFC or first person flying camera. What this will do is rather than launching Beat Saber and looking through it and, you know, through the headset, Instead, it will launch Beat Saber on your desktop and then it will control it with your mouse and keyboard. 
So that way you don't have to worry about putting on hands. You can basically you know, just launch the game and then go right into just watching your lights in game on the, on the, through the, through the Beat Saber uh, thing on your desktop and then see what your lights will look like. However, in order to do this, there are a couple of steps you're going to need to do first. Namely, there are two mods you need to pick up. One is FPFC Toggle, the other is Music Escape. FPFC Toggle allows you to actually fly around it, uh, just, uh, just, uh, just basically control that like you normally would using W, A, S, and D, and then looking around with your mouse. Music Escape allows you to that once you are inside of the actual song itself, to, uh, to allow you to, well, escape the music. Because again, if, you've only map, uh, if you only have a little bit of your light, not the whole thing, if you only you know, have you know, 10 seconds of lights to watch out of a three minute map, you don't want to sit there for three minutes in darkness, so you just basically need to watch the part you need, and then, okay, hit escape to get out of it. Now, as for how do you actually put these on there, there are, it all depends on if you are using Steam or using Oculus, but the Oculus version will work in no matter what. So if you are using Steam, what you need to do is basically go onto your Steam settings, and then just add the FPFC property to, to Beat Saber, and then launch it, and then, okay, you're in FPFC mode. I personally don't like doing it that way. Instead, I will basically follow the Oculus route, which is creating a shortcut to Beat Saber with this tag. So in order to do that, what you need to do is find your Beat Saber execute and then create a shortcut for it. So once you then create the shortcut, once again, as I mentioned in the other videos, I like to have all my stuff set in right one nice and neat folder. So, okay, we've created our shortcut. We're then going to right click, go to the properties of the shortcut, and then under here where it says targets, just add an FPFC. So now, by executing the shortcut, it'll launch Beat Saber with the FPFC tag, and then we go back to FPFC mode, and then we're good to then basically kind of preview what our lights are going to look like. But let's say, well, what if you are a Quest user and you don't have, you know, Beat Saber on your computer? Instead, if you guys remember, I have mentioned, uh, you know, way back in video one, there is the online BS viewer created by Rabbits. So in, so in this case, you can just upload your map to this website. So we'll click on the link, head on off to our lovely little websites. And then now it's, okay, well, we'll just upload our file and then let it play. And this will give us a nice, decent view of what it will look like in game. So notice it's still kind of bare bones, kind of basic. It's not going to look exactly like in Beat Saber, but it is going to re basically read your map and play it as exactly Beat Saber would. It might be a little bit lower graphics than what Beat Saber will look like, but the lights will be a lot more on points than the editor itself will be. So these are the two best ways to actually preview your light shows in order to tell will the lights actually look good. All right, so now we've had those lights generated. So now there's two things I do want to quickly mention, and namely those were some of those more complicated tricks, as well as the auto lighter, which I will put towards more towards the end. So the big trick that a lot of lighters will use is what's known as the strobing effect. So the question is, what is a strobe? So what a strobe does, it is it just alternates between one of these blocks and an off. So it just strobes off and on. It might, you might strobe a flashing on, or you might strobe a fading off. In order to set a strobe, all you need to do is right click on one of these events. This will then set the, basically, uh, the thing to now set a strobe based off of these two blocks down here, where there's duration and interval. So the strobe duration is how long in beats, do you want this effect, this effect to strobe for? The interval is what precision you want the strobe effect to be. So notice if I, if I set this as one and one, as an on block, and we'll skip ahead just so I have a nice blank section, a little more. So I set this as a one and one strobe, Notice it basically for for every oops, I should go on the whole beat. So for using one for one precision is how it's going to strobe. So beat one on, beat two off, beat three on. Duration is like I said how long in beats this is going to go for. So if I set this to five, for five beats it'll go off on off on off. 
if I change the precision once again, maybe I set it to one half. So one over two. Show up again. So there's on, off, on, off, on, off, on, off, on, off, on, off, blah, 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 blah. So this, comes, this strobe effect comes in really handy, especially for a, a session like this, because notice in this section, if I let this play. This is set, to, uh, I have the lights going to be set to our claps. The claps are on every single whole beat. And it's from beat 40 all the way up to beat 30 or beat 87. So in this case, oh, well, I need to do a lot of just this on off on off from 40 to 87. So what we'll do is a strobe duration, whoops, a strobe duration of, if I could do math in my head, 47 at an interval of two on our backside lasers, the one that I set, I wanted, I was basically using as my claps. So now if I let this play, I now have the entire clap track already mapped out using this strobe effect. This is not the only way we can use strobes, however. Another way we can use strobes is to, well, actually make an actual strobe light, but these you do need to be careful using because if you set the precision really, really small, it, is, it could trigger epilepsy in people. So you do need to be careful with it. So if I go forward a bit to here, so if you remember, those drums kicked up really quickly. We're basically going from one quarter to one sixth. So in this case, well, these are my drums. I want these to be my track neons. And since we're actually picking up an edgy, let's do a flash. So in this case, since every I need every quarter to be an on, I will set my precision to be an eighth. So that way, every eighth note will be off, every quarter note will be on. And my duration will be until, looks like, from up to 100. So 96 to 100, a duration of four with my flash. Remembering to right click with my flash. So now, let it play. So we can we see our strobe effect. And then here, these are now one sixth. Well, now instead of an eighth, I will do a twelfth. And then once again, in this case, this is for 100 to 2. So I'll do a duration of 2. So now we let this play. So this is what, what I was just talking about when we were looking at the, um, the preview. Notice, once we get low enough precision, this starts to struggle actually showing this effect going off. Especially notice when we get down to the, um, the sixth strobe going off, or the one twelfth strobe going off at the end, it's actually missing, uh, missing a bunch of those frames. So this is why, especially when you start using strobes, you want to preview it either in-game or with Rabbit's Viewer, in order to actually see get, get a better representation of what these lights effects are going to be. But this is not the only thing we can use the strobe effect for. We can also use it for ring spins. So let's say once we get to this point, since right now this is where it's getting, the job is really getting ready to hit, it's getting really faster and faster and faster, I want my rings to be going crazy. So in that sense, we can actually strobe our ring spin events. When we're going to be stro strobing it though, we basically want to max out our interval, so we'll set it to be 1 64th, and we will now spam our ring event rotation for two beats. And we'll say this slower section, we're not going to have it strobing the entire time, but I just do still want it to be spinning, basically kind of ramping up into speed. So maybe I'll start off as 1 16th. And then for another, we'll ramp it up to 32. So now, if we can play. So you notice, 
But basically, with the way the, the the ring strobe works is every time it does a ring spin, it just basically keeps trying trying to spin it. And trying to control the spin is the difficult part. But by just basically spamming it enough times, we basically force it to keep spinning so that way they don't kind of counteract each other. So notice in this case, by starting at 1 12th, they are kind of counteracting each other a little, or I want to say they are counteracting each other a little bit, but for the way I'm trying to get this effect, that's okay because I, be, I want it to start slow and then start ramping up. Yeah. So basically it's starting slow, then gets faster and then maxes out its speed once I get to that really fast 1-6 stream at the end. So now we have that lovely, lovely ring spins placed in there. Now the thing is though, you do want to be careful you don't, over, you don't overload these too much because you actually can start experiencing performance issues if you strobe way, 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 way too much. So one thing you do want to keep in mind is if you remember back when we were when we hit shift tab to bring up this little dialog box here, we have this stat panel. So if you click on the stat panel, so if you remember, so we have our note account, our notes per second, bombs, walls, ratios, all this other fun stuff. For lighting, basically this is a good way to keep track of how many lighting events do you have. So once you have, if you do start using a lot of strobes, this lighting event count will go up dramatically. So this is why, if you remember, you know, way back uh, last time we were going over setting up Meteor Map and all those settings, there was that no lighting mode. Once you start approaching 10,000 or more lighting events, this can start having problems. So do keep that in mind that if you are starting to approach that, you know, magic 10,000 number, do consider turning off or t turning on no lighting mode so you don't run into issues when you are actually making your map itself. But as a first time mapper, yeah, you're probably not going to hit that count. I personally only got to afford those very rarely because most of the songs that I map don't require heavy use of strobes and ring spins. I only need to use them occasionally. This now brings you back to the, brings you to the last thing I want to talk about was the auto lighter itself. So again, uh, hitting shift tab to bring this up, we have this little light map up in. If we click on light map, it'll bring up another dialog box to actually start setting up the, some of the stuff you want. I personally don't use light map. This is actually the first time I've actually ever opened up light map. So when it comes to actually using this stuff, yeah, I don't really know too much about outside of kind of a rough idea of what some of these things actually mean. Because minimal sounds like minimal. Super minimal is minimal, really minimal lights. And then there was light is so many lights. So basically these kind of tells you of the settings that some of these that, that, that they'll end up using. Like I said, me personally, I don't really suggest using light map because again, you don't get really awesome, neat, cool light effects outside of that. It's much better to actually make these lights on your own because again, it'll work out a lot better for you. But aside from that, I believe that is all I did want to talk about in terms of how to do lighting. So now, okay, we've added some of our blocks, we've added some of our notes. So once you spend enough time, you'll basically have all this done. You'll have all your you'll have all your blocks mapped out. You'll have all your lights mapped out. Then comes the fun part, actually testing your the actual map you made. So we will see you in the next one.